to talk about a lot of free things or nearly free things that you can do every day to improve your health. Number one, well, it's not exactly free, but it doesn't cost very much. I want you to start using vinegar. And no, that's not to clean your coffee maker, although it does work for that. I'm talking about the benefits of acetic acid. If you've read Gut Check, you know that acetic acid is one of the short chain fatty acids that are really, really, really important for making the ultimate short chain fatty acid called butyrate. And butyrate is really the holy grail of short chain fatty acids. Butyrate just happens to be the essential fuel for the cells that line your colon, your large intestine. They get 80% of all their nourishment, not from your bloodstream, but from the butyrate produced by your gut bacteria. Now, here's the deal. You could eat all the fiber you want, and the odds are you're not going to produce butyrate. How come? It turns out we need an assembly line of various bacteria and the compounds that they produce to end up with butyrate. And it just so happens that acetic acid is one of those components that's necessary to get the final product butyrate. Now, of course, you have to have the right gut producing butyrate bacteria, but you got to have the precursors. So acetic acid is one of those great ways. The secondary effect is that these compounds, short chain fatty acids, are actually really cool mitochondrial uncoupling compounds, and they also are really cool anti-cancer compounds. Now, why is this so important? Have you noticed that there's article after article after article talking about young people developing cancer, particularly colon cancer? And you ever wonder why that is? Now, the answer is not, well, let's start screening for colon cancer earlier. Let's, instead of 50, let's screen at 45 or let's screen at 40. No, the answer is, why is that colon cancer developing in younger and younger people? And the answer is, we no longer are producing butyrate to feed the wall of our gut and to prevent cancer. So I want you to think about vinegar as one of the fundamental parts of a healthy diet for you. You may remember that I invented the fake Coke, where you take San Pellegrino sparkling water or another sparkling water, pour some aged balsamic vinegar in it, and it kind of looks like a Coke, or tastes like a Coke, but you're getting a shot of vinegar. Apple cider vinegar. You know that mother that's in there? Do you know what that is? That's actually dead bacteria and yeast cells. And if you've read Gut Check, you know that those dead bacteria and those dead yeast cells are actually postbiotics as well. And they educate your microbiome and they actually promote a more diverse microbiome. So whenever you're buying apple cider vinegar, make sure you get it with the mother. Now, there's a lot of apple cider vinegar drinks out there because quite frankly, a lot of us come from a culture where we do not appreciate sour foods. And so companies know this, and so they'll add sugar to an otherwise healthy product like apple cider vinegar and make it in a shot or a drink. So please, just because it says apple cider vinegar or another vinegar doesn't mean it's healthy for you if it's been loaded with sugar. What my wife and I do, we probably, at any one time, we have anywhere from five to 10 different vinegars in our cabinet. And they're endlessly variable now. I happen to like a fig vinegar right now, but there's apple cider vinegar, there's champagne vinegar, there's sherry vinegar, there's rice vinegar. It goes on and on and on. 
Each of these have different polyphenols. And so adding vinegars into your daily routine as a salad dressing is a great way to improve your health for little or no expense. And just start experimenting with it. You'll have a great time. And have a fake Coke on me. Okay, secondly, in the energy paradox, I introduced the concept of exercise snacking. What the heck is exercise snacking? Short bouts of exercise done several times a day actually is the equivalent in human studies to doing 30 minutes of continuous workout in a gym. So stop killing yourself in a gym. You don't need a gym membership. You can get all the benefits of hours at the gym with exercise snacking. For example, put a song on your iTunes or wherever you get your songs on Spotify and dance for three minutes. Make an idiot out of yourself. Dance with your dog. My dogs love to dance. They think it's just crazy. It keeps your metabolism flexible. Now, I call these snacks because that's what they are. They're a snack. So when you're sitting on the couch watching TV and a commercial comes on and they go, we'll be back in 90 seconds, that doesn't mean get up and walk to the refrigerator for a snack. That means do a snack in the room. Do jumping jacks. Do push-ups. Do a plank for 90 seconds. Any way you can do this is a great snack. Now, house chores actually count. If you look at the blue zones, one of the things that's unique about blue zones is they actively garden. They actively walk. They walk up and down hills. I happen to live in hilly communities. I walk my dogs every day, twice a day, up and down hills. If you don't have a hill, do deep knee bends while you're brushing your teeth twice a day. That's right, I do deep knee bends while brushing my teeth. You're not doing anything else. That's an exercise snack. Speaking of dogs, did you know that dog owners live longer than non-dog owners? Yes, it's true. A study showed that a 10-minute stroll after dinner dramatically lowers blood sugar. And spending a lot of time in Europe, like my wife and I do, we're fascinated for the, by the fact that most individuals are walking after dinner, strolling in their communities. They're not running. They're not working out. They're walking after dinner. And Try that at home. It really makes all the difference in the world. Finally, eat breakfast later. It's free, and it saves you money and time. Just remember, our ancestors did not crawl out of our caves and say, what's for breakfast? There was no breakfast. There was no storage system for food. There wasn't a refrigerator. There wasn't a pantry. There wasn't a 7-Eleven next door. There wasn't a Starbucks. Our ancestors had to find food to eat it. And the modern hunter-gatherers usually don't eat until 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. So why is this so good for you? We've seen that the longer that you can fast following your final meal of the day, before you eat again, dramatically improves your metabolic flexibility, dramatically improves your mitochondrial function, dramatically improves your lifespan and health span. Now, the good news is your sleep time counts as part of the time you're not eating. So that if I can get you Instead of eating breakfast, break fast, at 7 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock in the morning. If I can even get you to 9 o'clock in the morning, that'll make a big difference. If I can get you to 10, even better. If I can get you to 11, even better. Now, I've worked out this protocol for you in unlocking the keto code, in gut check, 
and also my upcoming book, The Gut Brain Paradox. And the more I can get you to push that window out before you eat your first meal of the day, the better off you're going to be, the better off your mitochondria will work. And the good news is it's free. And all this wonderful free stuff is how to really improve your health dramatically. Finally, get your vitamin D levels up. Vitamin D is a hormone. It's not a vitamin, even though we call it a vitamin. It's really important to have vitamin D in your system. More and more research is showing that to a great extent, the higher your level of vitamin D, the more diverse your microbiome is. And quite frankly, the more diverse your microbiome is, the healthier you are, and the longer you live well. The higher your vitamin D level, the tighter the wall of your gut is. And the tighter the wall of your gut is, the less permeable it is, the better your health, the longer you live, and the longer your health span. Your vitamin D is essential to make your immune system work properly. And we know that sunlight is a great way to get vitamin D. But for most people, it is not enough. Most people need at least five to 10,000 international units of vitamin D3 a day. That's 125 to 250 micrograms of vitamin D. I personally have never seen vitamin D toxicity. The University of California, San Diego, has not seen vitamin D toxicity up to 40,000 international units a day. So vitamin D is remarkably safe and remarkably effective, and it's really cheap. And if you can't afford it, just get out in the sun. Don't be afraid of the sunlight. As I've talked about before, I don't wear sunscreen. I eat my sunscreen, and we can maybe talk about that in a different lecture. But that's the deal. Personally, in my patients, I run their vitamin D levels at 100 to 150 nanograms per milliliter. Most of your doctors will be afraid of that. I've been following vitamin D levels for 25 years now. And believe me, the higher your vitamin D, the better. Quest and Cleveland Heart Lab now say that 150 nanograms per milliliter is normal and not to be afraid of that sort of level. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. Stir it around and you're going to have your own perfect soda that's actually going to be good for you rather than kill you. And the taste, it's fantastic.